when we, as we started this series, that a lot of this is going to come from Jesus' teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. And I believe that's the most beautiful, the most radical teaching ever. But before he spoke those words on the Mount that day, you know what he did the night before? It says in Luke, it was at this time that he went off to the mountain to pray, and he spent the whole night in prayer to God. Jesus Christ, the Sermon on the Mount, is what he heard from the Father. Jesus heard before he spoke. And after hearing from the Father, he said, Not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Okay? In real Christianity, prayer is not just talking to the Father, as we seem conditioned to believe today. It is talking with the Father. Jesus heard first what he spoke. And that should lead to us thinking like him. You see, hearing from God is supposed to change your thinking. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we too often demonstrate that we believe that us talking to him is supposed to change his thinking. Right. <laughs> I mean, really, think about it. That's what, we try to how, much of your, him. how much of your prayer life is you're trying to change God's thinking? Right. We, we try to convince him of our desires, right. not you yes. taking into account right. it's his desires we need to be doing. Our prayer life is about changing our thinking. You know, Alice and I, we do, we've spent a lot of time in the, in, over the last 10 years in the United Kingdom in ministry, spending a lot of time there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I've had occasion to buy, like we last few times we went over, we bought cars while we were there. We were there long enough to do that. And we kind of bought older cars because it was cheaper than renting. You know, we, we traveled all over the United Kingdom in ministry. So we ran across what's called an MOT. Mm -hmm in the United Kingdom. Now, M MOT comes from the Ministry of Transportation. Right. And it's a vehicle inspection, okay? It's an annual vehicle inspection that's required throughout the United Kingdom. Every year, everybody, you know, has to take, on the anniversary of their last MOT, has to take it and have it inspected to find out if there's any faults, if there's any problems, right? That's similar to many states in the United States. Yeah, have, have vehicle inspections, yes. Yeah. But this is nationwide in the United Kingdom, exactly. and it is called an MOT. So a few years back during one of our uh, extended stays in the UK, as I say, I purchased an older automobile, mm -hmm. and it was coming due for an MOT. Mm -hmm. And as the car was coming due for that, Alice and I were driving over to North Wales to partake in a conference there. Mm -hmm. And as I was speaking at that conference, it dawned on me, that's code for the Holy Spirit getting my attention, by the way, that as a vehicle was checked to make sure that everything was in proper working order, this conference that we were at was God's MOT. He had gather, gathered us, all of us believers, to modify our thinking. Yes. <laughs> that was our... That was God's MOT, yeah. right? His purpose was and is to change us, to correct and grow us, to mature us, to transform and conform us. You know, David prayed and he said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. That's Psalm 139, verse 20, 23. That's that inspection. That's that MOT. And we're not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that you may prove what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect, Romans 12, 2. Listen, listen now. From Romans 8, 29, he says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 3. See, it says in Isaiah, quite a few places, and in Jeremiah, that, that God is the potter. Yes. We're the clay, right? Just, that's what I was just thinking about. Okay. He's still molding us and shaping us and changing us. And how we seem to fight it so. The flesh likes comfort and resists change. And that leads to so many of the traditions that we have in the church. 
so many things that are done by rote uh, that become the enemy of the Lord's purpose in our life. Now, I, I said this is going to be a very serious study. And I'll, I'll just remind you of Psalm 119, verse 165, which says that those who love thy law shall have great peace and nothing shall offend them. As I say to you, how many times have you gone to your services and it's three songs and announcements, pick up the collection, the pastor gets up and speaks, and then you have the greeting. Or, I mean, it's such a, it's, it's so predictable. predictable. Yes. Yeah. Now, I, I can't say that that's terrible, but I can tell you that God is very unpredictable. Yes. He has a tendency, if you know the word, he'll do, he'll do one thing. You know, one time he heals the, by, the blind by speaking a word. Another time he heals him by putting clay on his lips. Another time he heals the blind by sending him off to the pool of Shalom. He, he has, he's accomplishing the same purpose, but he uses different methods. You never know what the Holy Spirit's going to do. Mm. But you should be listening to him and be in tune with him because he is supposed to be in control, not our program. Yes. <laughs>